can you figure out the mystery of why Death Valley's sliding stones slide? Stick with me for a real quick preface. As an aspiring teacher, I read a lot of work done by researchers who are much smarter than me. And in some of their teaching philosophies that I find really inspiring, I've started to notice a trend. Which is pretty much that when someone figures out a concept for themselves, as opposed to just having it spoon-fed to them in a lecture, they get a much better, deeper understanding of the concept, and they retain those ideas much longer and better too. The way this is going to work is that I'll ask a question and then suggest that you pause the video to think about it for a while. Once you start the video again, I'll either give you a hint or ask another question that kind of guides you in the right direction and hopefully you'll have figured it out for yourself by the time I give you the answers to all of those little guiding questions as well as eventually the overall mystery. So if at any point you get frustrated or just need to know already, just keep playing the video or skip ahead for hints and explanations. So this week's topic is the mysterious sliding stones of Death Valley. They're these big rocks that move along the landscape gouging these long tracks in the ground. This happens in the dry lake bed of Racetrack Playa in Death Valley National Park, though the same thing seems to happen in a few other places. So the overall question for this video is, can you figure out why the sliding stones slide. Feel free to pause the video here and brainstorm, but we've known about these things since the early 1900s and scientists only proved what's causing it in 2014, so chances are you're probably going to need some more information and hints. First, some background info. The stones only move every two or three years and most tracks develop over three or four years. Stones with rough bottoms leave straight tracks while those with smooth bottoms tend to wander. Sometimes the stones turn over, exposing another edge to the ground and leaving a different track in the stone's wake. Trails differ in both direction and length. Rocks that start near each other may travel parallel for a time before one abruptly changes direction to the left or right or even back in the direction from which it came. Alright, so pause the video here and think about it for a while. Whenever you're ready, hit play again and I'll give you a little more to get you on the right track, or confirm that you're on the right track if you're already there. Okay, so here's a little more. Again, this happens on totally flat ground, so it's not that they're sliding down a slope. And earthquakes wouldn't make them move in long, straight lines like that, so those aren't the answer. If you're thinking that they get pushed by the wind, you're on the right track. But some of these stones are really big and heavy. This is the biggest stone I had on hand, and even moving this thing across hard-packed earth takes a lot of force. For wind to do that by itself, they'd have to be like hurricane force winds, which just don't happen in that area. So wind is involved, but what other factors could make it easier for the wind to push these things? If you don't want a hint just yet, pause the video, but if you do, here it is. Ancient Egyptians also dragged really heavy things across the ground, and they had a way of making it easier. What do you think this guy is doing? Pause the video if you're not ready, because I'm going to give you the answer. So that guy is pouring water in front of the sled that they're using to drag that huge statue because it's easier to drag things across wet ground. So hopefully you're asking, does it ever rain there? And the answer is yes. And there's also one other weather-related thing that plays a role in this that's also kind of surprising given how hot and dry Death Valley is known for being. So yes, every two or three years that area gets enough precipitation that being in a low-lying lake bed, enough water collects there that a lot of the stones end up sitting in a pond several centimeters deep. But wind and wet ground still aren't enough to get these things moving. There's still one more factor at play here. Can you figure out what it is? If you don't want to hint just yet, pause the video. But if you do, here it is. These are sometimes also referred to as sailing stones. And if you think about a sailboat, the wind that hits the boat itself is not the only thing pushing it. So think about how it is that sailboats catch extra wind, and then pause the video and think about how might something similar apply to sailing stones. And there's just one last hint, so whenever you're ready for it, hit play again. Alright, so here's the last hint. Keep in mind what I mentioned earlier about there being one more aspect of the weather that plays a role here that's kind of surprising given that this is Death Valley, and it has to do with how cold it can get there. Pause if you want, otherwise here's the answer. The important thing is that it can get below freezing. So the important factors are we've got wind, we've got these stones sitting in a shallow pond, and it can get below freezing at night. So, can you put these things together into a theory of how these stones are moving? Can you figure out why the sliding stones slide? Pause the video, and whenever you're ready, I'll explain it all. So what happens is that it gets cold enough at night that the top layer of the pond freezes into ice. Then, during the day as it warms back up and the wind blows, that layer of ice breaks up into separate pieces, some of which can be hundreds of feet across. Just like a boat's sails, these huge pieces catch a lot of wind, and when they get moving, they have so much momentum that they drag any stones that might be caught in them along, or bash into other stones and push them along. Then when the pond dries out a few weeks later, all that's left is a bunch of stones that have obviously slid along the ground and seems totally mysterious to everyone except those of us who have learned or hopefully figured out how it happens. High five! If you want to watch the video by the team of scientists that finally figured all of this out, click right here. Or if you want to watch more lessons like this, eventually there will be a link to a playlist of other ones right here. Thanks for watching.